now that they've gone through this journey and they've changed and they've reached their goal or they failed to reach their goal, now what are they doing? Do you believe the writer should know the ending before starting a story? I do. Not everyone would agree with me. Some people believe in free writing, right? So some people believe, hey, just get on the page and just start writing. The only reason I don't believe in that is because I believe that it can discourage you if you don't know where you're going. And especially if you're new at this, like if you've been doing this forever, you might not mind going to the page, writing and ended up being nowhere. It's not going to discourage you and you're going to be able to go back and start again. Um, but for people who are new at this, for people who have to work on deadlines, for people who are work for hire, so they're doing, they're working on someone else's stuff and not their own, having a plan is helpful. And just like Google Maps, if I can't put in my end location, then it can't tell me where to go. So I think it's very important to know where you're going. That doesn't mean it won't change, right? I might decide I'm on my way to Target and in the middle of that decide I wanna go to Walmart, right? And that's okay. But I knew I was going to Target, so I'm headed in that direction. And if I need to make a change, I can make a change. I can always detour. But I think if you know the end goal and you know how, that's the work, that's the pre-work, that's what you're doing. And you know, we, we offer workshops at the prof work, work books at the professional pen that can help you through your pre-work, right? That pre-work before you even get to your outline is asking you how, right? So you might know, even if it's a Marvel film, that they're gonna beat the bad guy. If you don't know how, what are you writing to, <laughs> right? Like, how do you get them there if you don't know how they're going to beat the bad guy? So in my opinion, it's very important to know where you're going. So when you look at a first draft from someone who's come to you for script consultation, mm -hmm. can you kind of always intuitively know, or maybe not even just, it's just very glaringly obvious, who had the ending planned out in the beginning and who it, it, the, the voices told them, the characters told them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... Some people, if you know structure, you don't have to have it planned out. I can tell that you don't know where this screenplay is going. If you do know where it's going, I might not know if you always knew. You know, I might not see that in writing, that you always knew where it was going, because that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you always knew. If the script is here and it's structured well and we get to the end and everything that they were supposed to achieve or not achieve is there and it's clear, great. What happens more so more often is we go round and round and round and then it finishes, <laughs> right? Because they didn't know how they were going to get there. Uh, so even if they know the end, they didn't know the middle, right? And so you can see that very easily that sometimes all they knew was the end and they had no idea how they were going to get to the end, right? So it's all the stuff in the middle. Or sometimes it is that everything is going pretty well and then we get to the end and they realize they didn't know how, they didn't know what to do once they got there and so then it just... Ends. And so then now it's anticlimactic or the resolution wasn't earned, you know what I mean? Because you gave me all this stuff and then all of a sudden you just stopped. And it's probably because you just got lost because you didn't have a plan. You didn't know where you were going and now you got to Target and you don't have a list. And now you're just wandering the halls of Target. And we already know that's bad because now you're going to end up with more stuff in your basket <laughs> than you came there for. And the same thing kind of happens in the screenplay. How does the ending reflect a story's central theme? So if you want to look at theme as the dramatic question that the writer is posing the audience, then one of the ways that you can show us that is through your characters. So if your main character is on uh, one side of the theme and your antagonist or one of your sub characters is on the other side of the theme, then the way it ends can tell us who was right or if no one was right and, the, and it's supposed to be a gray area. So one of my uh, favorite examples is Black Panther, right? The first one. So King T'Challa has been taught by his ancestors that they should be saving vibranium for just Wakanda and that their job is to only keep the people of Wakanda safe. And then Killmonger, the antagonist comes in and says, you have all of these resources and you should be sharing them. You're selfish that you're not sharing them. Both of those ideas make sense, <laughs> right? And our job as an audience is to choose a side. And as we see them fighting throughout, what's happening is the themes are fighting. I should only keep my own people safe. I'm responsible for everybody. That's what we're watching throughout. So in the end, when um, T'Challa kills Killmonger, that means the idea that it's my job to keep my people safe won. However, we see in the resolution that he decides to open up a little bit 
And it's because of his journey of hearing Killmonger's point of view, learning his backstory and having his fight with him that he was able to move his needle a little bit one way or the other and say, yes, it's my job to keep these people safe, but I can also probably be offering more resources to other people. So I think that resolution should be showing us, you know, some answers or purposefully not so that we can then go home and have a discussion about it, right? Because that's what you want people to do. You want people to be talking about was Killmonger right or was T'Challa right, you know? How much thought should a writer put into the tone they want the ending to have? Yeah, I think that, I think tone is going to matter, period, right? Especially when it comes to which genre you're considering. If you're writing a comedy and then you decide your the the tone of your resolution is going to be really low, then this is probably not a comedy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you have to figure out how you can have a dramatic moment that's still light enough that it works in the tone of the entire screenplay. So you have to ask yourself, and this is why in uh, Hollywood we use comps, what is this like, right? What other, what other movie, what other TV show, and if you're really art artistic, you can say what, other, what song, right? What song does this make me feel like? Then you kind of know what that tone is. And then your job is to kind of live in that tone throughout the entire, throughout the entire script right? Um, to kind of stay in, this is a light story. So even if something really um, traumatic happens, the way they deal with it, the way that it happens, the way they heal from it is light, <laughs> right? We're not going to go dark because then that changes the tone. Um, so I think it's very important to know the tone before you start writing. You should know the tone before you start writing. You should know what kind of script this is going to be so that you can make sure that every scene, every line of dialogue, every situation is going to stay in that area of tone. Is that something that you advise the screenwriters that you work with to do is to pick a song? Oh, relates? yeah, whatever, because tone is about feeling. So if I know like there's a, a butterfly by Mariah Carey, I can't explain to you what it makes me feel. I know how it makes me feel. And since I'm an artist, I can probably write that feeling, <laughs> even if I can't talk to you about it. It's the same thing if somebody reads a lot of books, you know, or if someone likes food, you know what cotton candy makes you feel like versus what spinach makes you feel like. You know what a nice warm soup on a cold day makes you feel like versus ice cream on a cold day, right? Doesn't mean you don't like ice cream, but it might mean it's cold outside. I don't want something cold in me, right? So I say for people now, if you go into a pitch, what makes it unique is if you're able to use other references other than just films and TV. If you go in and say that it's this movie meets this song, and it's a song that everybody knows, and it's a movie that everybody knows, now you've got people going, ah, because we know how that song makes us feel, right? We're all, uh, going back to the societal thing, we're all kind of living in the same space and time. We know how those things make us feel. So any kind of thing that gives you a feeling, I say you can use for tone. You just need to be able to, you know, uh, communicate that, you know, when you're, well, in your writing, and when you're pitching. How does the ending connect to the story's beginning? Yeah, so some people will specifically like bookend, right? And how it starts, they will literally finish it that way. Some people look at it as mirror images or opposites and how it starts, it's gonna um, be the exact opposite at the end. Um, in my opinion, it doesn't have to be that. Um, I often tell people that they can do a new normal at their end because all films and stories should start with a normal what I mean by normal is, what were these people doing whether the camera showed up or not? Because they're supposed to be people, right? They're not just your characters, they're people, they're living in the world. If the cameras weren't showing up, what would they be doing? And so during that setup in your act one, if we're talking about a feature, then you're showing me every day they would be going to school. Every day they'd be fighting with their mom. Every day, like whether we came here or not, whether there was an inciting incident or not, that's what they would be doing. And so then what you show me at the end of your uh, script is, now that they've gone through this journey and they've changed and they've reached their goal or they failed to reach their goal, now what are they doing? What's their new normal? And so that gives you an opportunity to show me what their arc was and how they grew. Now, not everything has a new normal. If you're watching a, a, a suspense thriller, then it might end when the police sirens are in the background, right? We don't get to see what happens after that. But I think Writing a new normal is a great opportunity to show how your beginning was affected by your end. And I think it should be affected, but I don't think you always have to show us. Sometimes, like again in the suspense thriller, if the bad guy was caught or is dead now, I don't necessarily need to know what else, 
is going on. Like I, I'm good, right? But if this was a drama or a comedy that started off showing me that this person um, lacked confidence, then maybe, you know, it's always easy to use like a singing competition. If they weren't able to even stand on the stage at the top of the movie, but by the end of the movie, they're on the stage rocking out, then I'm able to put those two things together. And it, it kind of really brings things back home and shows you that the reason they needed to go on this journey was to affect their normal.